everybody. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Okay. I've got about a half response there, so we'll try it one more time. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. That's much better. Much better. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming to our our second uh, career development week seminar, and this one's going to be really good. Um, how many of you are seniors out there? Probably a few juniors. How many juniors? A couple sophomores. Okay, freshmen. Oh wow, we got more freshmen than anybody else. Okay. Well, that hey, that's that's actually that's really cool that you come out to this seminar because. Um, Josh is going to give you a lot of good information that's going to be really helpful and it's, it's a good time to go ahead and start thinking about it. Um, before I introduce Josh and let him get into his seminar, I want to just make a couple of really quick announcements. Um, first of all, I saw some of you when you came in, you were browsing the tables back there. That's, that's great. Um, what we've done on the, this side of the room, on the tables, those are, um, uh, those are uh, poster boards that have uh, information about all the different kinds of career development activities that go on in all, the, all of the programs here at UC. Uh, so I encourage you to take a couple minutes just to look at that. and You can see what your program's doing compared to some of the other programs and you'll see a lot of the same things going on. Uh, we, we try to do a lot of uh, professional development here at UC so that uh, you all will be prepared. And of course this is part of the professional development coming to a seminar like this. Now on this side of the room, on the table back there, there are some schedules for the rest of the week. And so tomorrow, um, uh, as you all may know, if you looked at the schedule, we're going to talk about community and relationship building, and that's going to be delivered by Avon Coburn, who works for the YMCA. And uh, most of you all may, are a little bit too young to remember Avon's playing days, but he's the, uh, the leading rusher at West Virginia University's history. So um, he played about 15, 20 years ago. He's, he's a... Uh, very good guy, dynamic speaker, and I think you'll enjoy that. Um, Thursday is our career fair. So that's going to be over in the rotunda. Uh, it's from 10 to 2. Uh, so please come to that. I think you'll really enjoy the, the career fair. A lot of different companies there. Uh, a broad range is a great place to practice your networking skills. And so finally, my last announcement. Um, you'll see these flyers on the table in the back. Uh, I know you can't see this, but you can pick one up on your way out. Um, you all may or may not know, how many uh, business or uh, sport business majors are here? Uh, about half the room, okay. So if you're in the business school, you probably already know this. If you're, um, if you're not in the business school, and I didn't mean to leave out accounting, do we have any accounting majors in here? A couple, maybe? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple. Um, we have uh, a class called uh, FINA 101, and it's, um, it's, a, it's a basic financial literacy course. Um, our business school is trying, and it's open to anybody. You don't have to be in the business school. You can be in any program here. Um, it's a really high quality course, and it's, it actually goes over a lot of the things that Josh is going to talk to you about today. Um, but y'all, when, when, you, when you graduate, when you go out into the, the quote unquote real world, you get, you get a job. It's going to be, um, I mean, it's not easy managing finances. If you take the right steps, it's easy, but it's, it's, not, it's not all that easy, and I know from experience. So you can uh, make your own decisions. You can get in debt pretty quickly. So you have to, you have to make wise decisions when you're out there. So um, make sure you pick up one of these, and, and if you like what Josh has to say, I think you'd enjoy that course. So, so please take that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest today. Um, Josh Juckett is a financial wellness consultant with BB&T. Uh, he graduated from Georgetown College in 2008, so that's near Lexington, Kentucky. You know, know where that is. And uh, he got his bachelor's degree in history and communication, uh, then went on to get his master's degree in history from Eastern Kentucky University, right down, right down the road from Georgetown. Um, he began his career with BB&T in 2008 as a teller and has worked in several areas and has moved up. So, let me pause for a second. So Josh, somebody come in, he started basically the, the bottom, the basic job, and has worked his way up to a financial wellness consultant. And um, you all can, can do that. Uh, uh, your first job's not gonna be your last job. So, um, you know, Josh is a great example, somebody who worked hard and has really moved up. So since 2015, 
Uh, he's traveled around southern West Virginia talking to groups about the importance of having the financial goals and uh, plan to achieve those goals, and that's what he's going to talk about to you today. Uh, he's married to Cassie, and they have one dog and five cats. That's a bunch of cats. That's a bunch of cats. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, please make a Josh Jucker. Well, yeah, it started from the bottom and now I'm here, I guess, uh, for the Drake fans out there. Um, yeah, so let me tell you real quick about these cats. Um, first off, I never had a cat growing up, and I married into three, and almost seven years of marriage later, I've got two more. So, yeah, uh, for those of you who uh, are married, you may understand this, some of you may not be, you know, don't rush it. Um, but if you marry into cats, just prepare yourself for a whole new world. Uh, I've got someone here with me I want to introduce real quick, and that's Mary Ann Walker. And I don't know why she's sitting down, like she's not about to talk or something. Uh, if you're going to be quiet, I believe that when I see it. Uh, Mary Ann is a, the brand, one of our branch managers. We call them market leaders at bb &T. She manages the branch down here um, in Canal City, 57th Street. Uh, Mary Ann, I'm going to let you come up here and actually say a little bit about what you do before I jump in. You don't need a microphone. Um, like he said, I manage the branch up here in Canal City. Um, and when you manage a branch, you're responsible not only for the day-to-day -day function, but for the generation of revenue. So my real job is to generate revenue for the bank and control expenses in order to have a profitable facility. But what um, they were talking about, your first job is not going to be your last. I, too, started as a teller 31 years ago. And today I am a vice president at BBNT, a Fortune 500 company. I think we're actually 247 on the list of Fortune 500 companies. So don't be afraid to start someplace. Um, you know, I have three daughters, all very successful, but they said uh, when they started college, they thought, oh, well, you know, I want to make a hundred grand a year, then, oh, well, maybe 75, oh, maybe 60. Oh, dear God, I just hope I can get a job. So you have to start somewhere, and don't be afraid to start somewhere because there's usually opportunity for growth. And if you need anything, 57th Street up here in Canal City, we can help you. All right, so I'm going to play around with this microphone. It's weird for me to use a microphone. I'm not used to it. Uh, but before we dive into the financial wellness piece of this, I want to touch on something that Travis said. Uh, you know, he asked me last week to send him a paragraph about me, my bio, or whatever. It's really weird why I'm writing those things in the third person. Um, but one thing that he mentioned that when he read it out loud, kind of struck me a little bit. Um, you know, whenever he was talking about my school career, you know, I got my undergrad and my bachelor's in history and communication, and then I went and got a master's in history. And here I am 11 years later working for a bank. How'd that happen? Right? Uh, one of the things that you'll find out whenever you go out and you get it, some of you may have already found it out. Some of you have jobs right now that you may have got because you needed extra money to buy books or you needed just some spending money to get through life. Uh, sometimes when you start a job, it doesn't turn out to be what you expected it to be, right? I started working at a bank because, number one, I needed to pay my rent while I was going through my master's program. And number two, I always heard bank jobs were easy. So I was like, shoot, I'm going to get a job as a teller and not do anything. Well, that's the wrong answer. Uh, working on a bank is really hard, but the reason it's really hard is because, at least at bb &T, what we do is we are very culture-driven. Um, we have a very specific mission statement. That mission is to make the world a better place to live. How do you do that at a bank, right? I mean, as a teller, what am I doing? I'm cashing checks, taking deposits, I'm giving people cash back. I mean, how is that making a difference? Well, the re reality is you make a difference in everything that you do, every interaction you have. And that's what this job I have now is all about about being a financial wellness consultant, talking to people about financial goals, having a plan and achieving those. So wherever you end up after you leave here, uh, it is the opportunity you make of it. So no matter where you start, give it your all, give it your best, and be intentional in trying to make an impact on others. So having said all that, we'll just kind of jump right into this. And I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. That Nintendo 64 video is awesome. And I keep looking at it, I just want to play Mario Kart right now. So. Um, <laughs> Sorry if I get distracted and throw a banana somewhere. Um, financial wellness. I've said that phrase like 10 times already. You know, Travis said it a few times as well. We're going to talk about what that means here in a second, but whenever you all hear that phrase, 
What does that make you think of? What does financial wellness make you think of? I had the exact same response the first time somebody said it to me. Like, aren't you supposed to tell me what that means? Uh, let me ask you all a question. Does anybody here have a financial goal? A couple people nodding, maybe raising your hands. Yeah, kind of. Um, has anybody here ever wanted to save money? There's some more hands that have not. Yeah. Has anybody here ever wanted to just not overdraft your account before the next time you got paid? Yeah, there's a lot more of that. Um, anybody here want to retire someday? Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of different types of financial goals out there. I mean, some of us want to retire. Some of us want to save money. Some of us want to buy a house. We want to buy a car. We want to build our credit up. We want to be able to save money to go on a vacation. We want to save money for an emergency. A lot of us, we're just, we're just trying to get to the next payday without getting overdrafted and paying overdraft fees, right? Financial wellness is about knowing what your goal is and having a plan to get you to that goal. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. This program I work with at VPNC, which is called VPNC at Work, uh, we have some different tools and resources, but more importantly, we kind of have a blueprint for putting financial wellness in motion. So the first thing I'm going to do before we dive into those components, I want you all to think about what one of your goals is. I'm not going to ask you to share it with the group. You know, you don't have to tell anybody. But just take like 10 seconds and think, what's something I would like to do in my financial life? I'll give you a second to think about that. All right, everybody ready to tackle their financial goals? You got something you're going for? Good. Get out of college with as little student loan debt as possible, right? How's that sound? Um, we're going to talk about three main things throughout this presentation. The first thing we're going to talk about is having a financial partner. Does anybody here have a bank account? Okay, what do we have a bank account for? Save money, that's one thing. Yeah, what else do we have a bank account for? Anybody here get a direct deposit? Yeah, got to have a place for that to go. Anybody here use a debit card? Oh, there we go. Got to love, love that debit card. Um, Having a bank is really a lot of times about convenience, right? You know, I can go online, I can check my account balance, I can make transfers, I can, you know, see everything I want to see on my phone or on my computer. Online banking is awesome. You need a bank account for that, right? What's the difference, though, between having a bank account and having a financial partner? Um, has anybody in here been to the bank in the last two weeks? All right, so a couple. How about the last month? Okay, so a few more. Um, whenever you go to a bank, what do you see there? Who's in the bank? Usually not a lot of people, right? But you see people sitting in the offices, you see them at the toll line, all these people are working in the bank, what are they there for? When I was a teller, I thought my job was to stand there and like I said, do transactions, you know, take a deposit, give cash back, you know, whatever, answer a question, you know, that type, that type of stuff. The reality is, in the banking world today, People are in the branch to be there to help you guys out. But a lot of times we forget about that because number one, we don't have to go to the bank that often, right? Um, you know, if I didn't work for the bank, I probably wouldn't go to an office, say maybe once every couple of months. Because if I need cash, I go to the ATM. If I need a deposit, I can snap a picture of it on my phone. If somebody gives me cash, I'm gonna go ahead and spend it. I'm not gonna go deposit it, that's no fun. Um, you know, so it's easy to forget that inside the bank there are people and those people are there to be financial partners. One of the things we do at bb &T is we have something called a branch banker. It's basically the person who sits at the desk, opens accounts, and answers questions and all of that. What they're also there to do is be financial coaches for not just clients, but anybody. So you know, think about your goal that you just thought about. You know, if my goal is to save money. Well, is saving money the easiest thing in the world? No, of course not. If it was, they'd be a lot easier to do. Uh, but saving money is hard for a lot of reasons. For some of us, we have a problem with self-control and spending money, right? I get money in my account and boom, three days later it's gone. Or for some of us, it's maybe, you know, my bills are too much. I don't have any extra money to save. Uh, coming in and sitting down with a financial coach, somebody that you can just talk to about, hey, how do I come up with a plan? How do I set up a budget? We'll talk more about that in a second. 
But everybody should have access to a person that they can talk to. And that's something you do all have access to. Even as college students here, you're probably thinking, well, shoot, I don't need to worry about planning my financial life. You know, I just want to wait until I get a job, and then I'll do that. But the reality is, those habits start now. You know, when I was in school, I went to Georgetown College, which is just north of Lexington. I went to school not far from a Best Buy. And when I went to school, it was really easy to get a credit card. Basically, I had to just walk into a building, and I was a living, breathing human being. So they said, hey, you're approved for a credit card. Here you go. And it was awesome. So I got my Best Buy card and immediately maxed it out because I wanted to get, and this is going to make me sound you know, as old as I am. I got my Xbox 360. I got like three versions of Halo. And boom, I was ready to roll. And I kept doing that as I would make these minimal payments on my card. Well, shoot, I pay $25 for the card. That means I've got $25 more dollars I can spend at Best Buy, right? Eh, that's not how it should work. But because of those habits, when I came out of college, yeah, I had student loan debt. Now I also had credit card debt on top of that. I didn't have, at least I didn't think I did, I didn't have somebody I could go talk to and say, hey, how do I get out of this? I mean, from the outside, it sounds real simple. Don't go to Best Buy, right? Start paying off your credit card. But it's harder to do that than it sounds because I've also got these other things I've got to pay too, right? So having a financial partner is really about having somebody you can sit down with and say, hey, this is what things look like for me. How do I get from where I am to where I want to go? And that's something I want to make sure you all know. And that's not just a bb and Just about every bank is there to do that for you. So make sure you take advantage of the people at the branches that you bank at and talk to them and figure out your own plan. That's the second thing I want to talk to you all about, is the plan itself. Um, is anybody here, did you all come up with New Year's resolutions? Anybody? I think those are finally dying out, because you know what happens with a New Year's resolution usually? You don't do it, right? I do it for two weeks and then get off the track and then, yeah, I'm good. I don't need to worry about that. The reason we do that a lot of times is because if you have a goal but you don't have a plan, it's really easy to get off track for that goal. Um, a lot of times I talk to people and they'll start a plan and they'll say, yeah, I want to save money and then they'll save money for two weeks and then something will come up, they need that money that they saved, they spend it and then you know what? They're like, well, I didn't keep it in my savings account for two weeks, so why should I keep doing that? Um, when that happens, it's really easy to get off track, right? So you gotta have a plan. How do you come up with a plan? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. The first one we just talked about. Talking to somebody, a financial expert at your bank, or maybe it's somebody that, you know, a family friend or something like that that works with finances. Talking to them, have them help you come up with a plan. You know, there's this kind of idea that by the time you hit a certain age, you should know everything there is to know about banking. The reality is, banking changes all the time. There are different products out there, different services, different this, different that. It's hard to keep up with, and I work at a bank. So you shouldn't be expected to have to keep up with that by yourself. You should have somebody that you can continue to bounce ideas off of and talk to, and that's the partner. The second thing you have is the internet. Anybody here use the internet? Yeah. Funny thing about internet. Um, there's a website I've got pulled up here. It's, uh, this is called Financial Foundations. This is something we do at bb &T. This is something that you all have access to, and I've got some handouts here that uh, feel free to come up and grab them whenever we wrap up. But you don't have to have an account. This doesn't cost anything. But this is a financial education resource that we came up with a couple years ago. Uh, basically, all of these different little tiles here, uh, you know, I'm just playing with the point. This is fun, by the way. Uh, you have all these different, you know, modules is what we call them. And each of these modules is only about 10 or 15 minutes long. But you see they're each one a different topic, you know, building emergency savings, identity protection. Um, one of my favorites is the credit scores and reports. Whatever your goal is, you have to know how to get there in order to put a plan together. That's what these modules are for. Um, each of the modules that we have, they're only about 10 or 15 minutes long. You can do them on your phone, you can do them on your computer, any way you get on the internet. But these are designed to give you information about how do I do this topic. So if your goal is to save money, that's the thing you thought about a few minutes ago was, I would like to save money, but I don't know how to do it. Clicking on that savings module, and then also one that I recommend everybody check out is the emergency savings one. Those are there to give you ideas, okay, these are things you can do in your daily life to save a few dollars here, to save a few dollars here, to cut back a little bit here. 
Um, has anybody gone through their statement in the last couple of months just to see where their money's going? Okay, a couple of people have. Uh, why is that important to do something like that? Figure out where to make your changes, right? You know, whenever I asked earlier who had a debit card, we pretty much all raised our hand. Uh, what's something that's really easy to do with the debit card? Swipe it, right? It can be really easy to spend money. I'll talk more about that in a second, but going through and seeing the things that you can do to save that extra dollar here, save a dollar here, those little changes add up. That's what this module goes in and talks about, is how you can identify those things and how you can apply them to your life. At the end of these modules, you actually get to set up your own action plan for that topic. So if your goal is to save money, you go through, you get the information, and then boom, at the end, now you're setting up your own action plan for how to save money. Something that you put to your own life and then start to save money. This is where financial wellness really begins, is when you start to take control of your own financial life. Um, the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to having a plan is you got to stick to it. You know, if I have a plan and then I don't do anything about it, is, you know, is my goal going to happen? Probably not. So how do I stick to the plan I create. You know, some people are able to do it just by sheer willpower. I'm not that person. Uh, my wife and I, we came up with our own plan. It was to save money. We went through and set up our budget, and you know, everything looked good. We're gonna have money to save, this is awesome. End of the month rolls around, and we've got 75 cents in our checking account and nothing in our savings account. What in the world happened? Um, we didn't stick to our plan is what happened. So how do you do that? What are some tools to help you do that? I'm gonna tell you about a couple of the tools we have at BBNT. Here's what I want you all to do. If you have an account with BBNT already, look for these tools on your app. If you don't bank with BBNT, bank somewhere else, look to see if you have tools like this because they really do help. The first thing I wanna tell you about is something we have called a spending analysis tool. Has anybody here ever gotten paid or gotten a check and thought a few days later, where did all my money go? It happens. Um, for my wife and I, that's what was happening to us. We'd get our paychecks, we'd pay our bills. The money that we thought we were gonna save, we'd end up spending somewhere else. Where was it going? We'd pull up that pie chart and, oh look, there's how much we spent on gas, on groceries. There's how much we spent going out to eat. You'll never guess where we spent too much money. And it wasn't going to like Ruby Tuesday or Olive Garden every night. We were going to the McDonald's drive-thru like every day. And those little two and three dollar chips for the drive-thru, guess what, they add up. Especially when we're both doing it. So being able to see where your money is going helps you again take that control and say, okay, this is where it's been going. I had money to save. I've been giving it to McDonald's. That's got to change. And I know what I need to change. I need to not spend as much money going out to eat. So a tool like that helps identify the areas that you can build on. The second tool I want to talk about, I mentioned budgeting earlier. Who here likes to budget? All right, this is my kind of group. So, I've been with BB&T for 11 years, almost 11 years. The first thing I was asked when I opened my first account at BB&T on like my second day on the job, uh, the branch maker, relationship maker is what we call them then, said, do you have a budget set up? And I was like, no, I just need to be able to buy food and pay my rent. I don't need a budget for that, do I? And she basically gave me that look like she was gonna smack me in the face, but knew she couldn't smack me in the face. Uh, having a budget is so important. The reason I still hate budgeting is because there's about 10 million other things I'd rather do with my time than budget. But here's the thing, whenever you have a goal, whenever you have a plan, you have to have a budget to get where you wanna go. Because what is a budget ultimately? A budget is you telling your money, hey, this is where you're going, not the other way around. So why did budgeting not work for me? I just said my wife and I made a budget. Why didn't it work? Well, my dad, uh, who I, I draw a lot of things from, uh, when I was growing up, he basically had his notebook sitting next to the couch, and when it was time to do the budget, he would pick up the notebook, write everything down, and that was it. You know, they, he and my mom stuck to it. That was how they did their thing. So that's what I tried to do. Well, guess what? I don't have the same willpower my dad did, uh, or does, rather. Uh, I would write everything down, but then I wouldn't look at that budget again until the end of the month, when at that point, I've got 75 cents and nothing in my savings account. So, I kept trying to do the same thing over and over and over. It didn't work for me. And then I found the tool that we have on our app. It's a budgeting tool that really helped me out a lot. And again, look to see if you have something like this because it makes budgeting so much easier. Basically, I go on my app, I fill my budget out, I customize it however I want, and then I hit save, 
And now when I use my debit card, let's say my going out to eat budget for the month is $100. If I swipe my debit card at McDonald's and spend five bucks, that five bucks hits my account and that also hits my budget. So anybody here check their online banking in the last couple days? Yeah, most of us do, right? I check mine every day. So I pull up my app, first thing I see is not my balance, the first thing I see is my budget. So, okay, it tells me as of February 19th, this is how much money I've spent going out to eat this month. If my goal's 100 and I look at that today and it says you've already spent $95 going out to eat, what do I need to do the next week and a half? You know, everybody always says start. I'm not gonna start, I promise you that. Um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna pack my lunch and bring it to work, right? I'm gonna be less likely to go to that drive through trip to McDonald's or Taco Bell or wherever because I can see where I am. That's so important, being able to see your progress on your, your goal, on your plan. If I see that, I know, okay, I know I don't need to go out to eat for the next week and a half, and then I stick to that, and I had that money left over that can be the extra payment on a credit card or put in my savings account, now I'm sticking to my plan, now I'm closer to the goal that I had. So having a plan is one thing, but you gotta make sure you stick to it, and there's a lot of tools out there to help, help us stick to those, more so than even 10 years ago when I first started. So take advantage of those <coughs> tools. So we talked about having a partner, we talked about having a plan. Now I'm gonna talk about the third thing, and this is the most difficult. Check and make sure I'm good on time here. So my phone doesn't work. There we go. All right, so the third thing is action. Who here said they wanted to retire someday? Most of us did. How does that work? Do I just wake up the morning I turn 65 and hit the snooze button and say I'm retired? Mary Ann says yes. We'll see what happens. Um, if you do that, you're probably not gonna have a job the next day. Um, you gotta have a plan to make that happen. Retirement just doesn't happen. Money doesn't magically go into you know, IRA or 401k or whatever. Um, you've gotta make that happen. You've gotta know what your plan is and then make that happen. Same thing with saving money though, right? Has anybody here ever woken up and looked at their account and then all of a sudden the money they wanted to save is now in their savings account? I was hoping somebody would say yes so they could tell me how to make that happen. But it just doesn't happen that way. You have to make these things happen. If your goal is to build your credit, it's not gonna build up automatically by itself. You gotta do things to make it happen. So how do you take action when it comes to a financial wellness plan? Well, number one, you have to know what your goal is. That's the absolute number one thing you've got to do. So what did I ask you all to think about a few minutes ago? I should think about a goal. You've already done the first step of setting up a financial wellness plan, so that's awesome. You didn't know you were going to get that little tidbit that came today, so there you go. But now what's the next thing? Next thing you got to do is you've got to come up with your plan. A couple of things I'll say about that. Number one, if you have a bank account somewhere and you have a goal but you're not really sure how to get there, call somebody at your bank. Stop in and talk, you know, see them face to face. Talk to someone and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm not really sure how to get there. They should be there to help you come up with that plan. Make sure whatever plan you come up with is realistic. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and they come to me and they say, you know, I've got $15,000 in credit card debt and I want to pay it off and my goal is to pay it off this year. And they don't have any sort of plan. They never saved any money in their life. They're used to living off the credit card. Paying off $15,000 in one year may not be the most realistic plan. So make sure whatever plan you come up with is realistic and fits into what your current situation is. Uh, I can't say that enough. That's how so many people will end up getting defeated on this, is they'll come up with a plan, it worked for like two months, and then they fall off, and they're like, you know what, the heck with it. This isn't working out for me. I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing. That's not getting you anywhere. In fact, that a lot of times can cause that hole to get deeper. Um, so if your goal is to save money and you're thinking, you know what, I'd really like to save $50 a month and you've never saved any money a month, start with 10 and then build yourself up. Um, just keep doing what you know is gonna work for you and then as you get that figured out, adjust the goal. Because goals can change. You can always change your plan. Just make sure you start somewhere that makes sense for you. So. You know, like I said, the first start is to have the goal, the second is to come up with your plan, then make sure you're sticking to it. Um, I, there's a lot of different ways to do that. I'm not gonna dive into all of them, but I will tell you the uh, Building Emergency Savings module on there has some great ideas and some tips on ways to do that. Um, 
doing things like, has anybody here uh, ever done the click list thing for Kroger or Walmart? Basically, if you're going to get your groceries, um, you know, my, one of my problems is I very much, you know, people will get me with their marketing. If I see something that's colorful and looks good, I'm probably going to buy it. Um, if I click list my grocery list and they bring it out to me and I never go in the store, guess what? I'm going to save myself a lot of money on getting not making those impulse buys. So things like that that you can do. Um, other thing, who here has a cell phone? Okay, so most of us have a cell phone, right? So anybody here paying for their own cell phone right now? A couple of us are, right? We know how crazy that can get sometimes. Make sure you're always looking for how can I save money on this? Because I'll tell you what, once you get out of college or once you happen to start paying for your own like cable bill or cell phone bill, those companies will do a lot to try to keep you from leaving their business. So anytime you feel like your bill's starting to get too high, call them up and say, hey, you know what, I think I'm gonna be moving somewhere else. And hey, all of a sudden they can save me $20 a month on my bill. So don't be afraid to do that. You know, know what you can do as a consumer. Um, you know, again, it's just things like that that are gonna cause little changes that add up over the course of a year. So ultimately your financial wellness plan, who's, who's in charge of that? Who's responsible for making sure you get to your goal? You are, right? You can have the greatest bank in the world, you can have the greatest insurance company in the world, but ultimately you're the person that is gonna say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. This is my plan, I'm gonna have to execute it. Use the partnerships that you have, whether through your bank or through other companies, uh, but know what your goal is, know what your plan is, and then do what you can to stick with it. So I just threw a whole bunch of information at you all in the last like 30 minutes. Um, and I'm gonna wrap it up and y'all can ask any questions that you have. You can come, if you have a question that you don't wanna ask in front of the group, Marianne and I are both gonna hang around for a while to you know, talk with you guys. But uh, just know that whatever your goal is that you thought about, you can do that. It may not seem like you can get there right now. It may not seem like it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world. And I'm not gonna stand up here and say that financial planning makes everything super easy all of a sudden. What I will say is that you're much more likely to get to where you want to go when you have a plan and you stick to it than when you're just trying to hope it happens. So uh, again, thank you uh, everybody for coming. Thank you Travis for inviting me out. Again, I've got some handouts for this website uh, for everybody. And like I said, this is free. You don't have to have an account at DBNC, so you can go to it anytime and pull it up. Uh, be sure to use that. And then also, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. But thank you guys for coming out, appreciate it.